Welcome to the milk bar. 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 Welcome along to episode 540 of the Milk Bar. Jason Forrest here with you as ever. And coming up on this week's show, we'll be hearing from Brown Hills Musical Theatre about their show at the Prince of Wales, a world of musicals. Also, we'll be catching up with West Bromwich Operatic Society's youth as they are putting on stage the wonderful show that is all shook up. That's along next week at the Dormston Mill Theatre. We'll be having a bit of a chat with the one and only Kim Joy from the 2018 series of the Great British Bake Off, all about some brilliant buns that she's produced for Amazon. Amazon Fresh are selling those. Full details on the way. We'll be having an atter with stage door Johnny too. He has Trey Trey Cabaret arriving for the first time in Litchfield this coming weekend. But first of all, My Fair Lady is Bilston Operatics production at Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre from the 12th through to the 16th of November. I'm joined by four of the cast. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Right, we're all up here in the glorious surroundings of the spotlight at the Grand. And uh, I think, should we start with introductions? I'm going to begin this end, please. So tell, tell me who you are and who you're playing, please. Hi, I'm Nick Sullivan and I'm playing Colonel Hugh Pickering. Mm-hmm. My name's Lucy Follows and I'm playing Eliza Doolittle. Next. I'm Tim Brown and I'm playing Henry Higgins. Super. And uh, my name's Stephen Burton Pye and I'm playing the part of Freddie Ainsford Hill. Well, I'm, I'm going to go important here, Ms. Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us a, a bit about how this fair lady starts off in the story. Um, she starts off selling flowers at Covent Garden Market. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a, a bit of a down and out, struggling through life. And she comes across Henry Higgins, who uh, bets that, well, actually Colonel Pickering bets that they couldn't make it into a lady. Mm-hmm. And so uh, mission accepted. <laughs> and it follows my story throughout to uh, eventually appearing at the Embassy Ball. So along the way some brilliant songs and you've got some amazing numbers in the show haven't you yeah there's a, there's a couple of big ones there's just you wait um which is um probably the hardest thing in my opinion <laughs> uh wouldn't it be lovely is another classic and could have danced all night which is a, a bit of a an iconic song as well and and this is so very bilston isn't it the size the grandeur and bilston loves doing this sort of stuff yeah it, it's great and it's great to play such iconic roles and such an iconic stage mm-hmm. um so something that i think we're all looking forward to and in an anniversary year as well isn't it yeah 125 years i think it's fantastic that we're getting to do this show which is a classic in the theater that is just a classic because mm-hmm. i mean obviously the film version people know as well well, yes, but um, Audrey Hepburn, no, we want our Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> but Nick, you remember when the film was released, don't you? Yes, I do, actually. I was alive then, in the last century when that film was released. And my auntie took me and I was absolutely memorised by Cecil Beaton's brilliant designs and the wonderful acting of all of the principals. I do think I look a bit younger than Wilford Hyde right there. OK, we'll, we'll, let you, we'll give you that one, just about. <laughs> but I mean, you're looking forward to, to your role in this as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. It's really great. It's lovely to have a role that... Um, is comic but at the same time has a nice serious undertone to it Mm -hmm. and um, I'm very fortunate having great people to work with because if you don't have great people to work with you don't have a great show and we have great people yeah it is always a good team and uh, obviously you get the girl absolutely that's that's spoilers by the way potentially that's debatable it's 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 ambiguous it's very ambiguous (laughs) you can can make your own mind of what happens at the end okay we'll we'll decide that after we've seen the show so people need to come and see the show so they can decide quite what happened but tell us a bit about some of your work in the show well, basically, I'm playing Henry Higgins, who's a, a phonetics professor, and he decides to take on the challenge of uh, teaching Eliza how to be a lady. Uh, he's not a very conventional character, not a very pleasant man, <laughs> is he? <laughs> I think he's quite kind, <laughs> Thanks, Nick. So he's, he's a little bit unusual. Some might say a bit misogynistic. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's not a modern man. But so, yeah, certainly the part is of its time. Yeah. But taking that into account, maybe he's got a little bit of a romantic streak in there, do you think? You have to come and see it. Okay, we've got to... No, 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 he's no, he's no, not giving no, anything away. I think he's a modern man because he believes in education. He believes that education can transform person. That's a very modern thought, 18, uh, 1912, when this is actually set. And actually, even now, he believes that education can change lives. But some of his viewpoints are slightly... <laughs> Okay, we'll let the cast argue about that one. Uh, That's me- your acting choice. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, um, yeah, so Freddie Ainsworth Hill falls madly in love with uh, with Eliza. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's understandable, of course. Um, I mean, you know, there's quite a couple of interesting scenes, especially at the at the Ascot Gavette. 
um, and a couple of other you know scenarios and songs. I've got a, a classic song on the street where you live, which I absolutely love to sing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, it is going to be an absolutely amazing show. It is the 12th through to the 16th of November here at Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre. 01902 42921 is the box office number. Grandtheatre.co.uk to get your tickets. Or if you know any of the gang from Bilston, you'll all gladly sort them out with tickets, won't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you know one of these people, find them, sort them out, stalk them until you've got tickets for what's going to be an amazing show and get yourself down to the Grand. Well, uh, break a leg is what I will say and have a brilliant time on stage. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a signed copy of Don Chess's album to give away. We started the competition last week. I'll remind you now, if you want to get in touch, you can email studio at themiltbarpodcast.com. Let us know what Don Chess's job was before he took over the stage full time with his wonderful music act. So let me know. Text me 07786 200 690. Start your text WCR or email studio at themiltbarpodcast.com. We'll pop in the drawer if you can tell us what that is. And as a treat, we're going to be taking more tracks from Don Chess's album as we head through the show today. Why may I tell you, know, this lady, I took some convincing, you know. She nice to still. Ah, oh, boy. I met a young lady this morning. Baby, you look so charming. Mm. I would like you to be my darling. Trust me. X amount of loving in the evening. Oh, she said, baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. Oh, be lady. She said, baby. About a date this evening, yeah. Maybe take you to a meal or a movie. We could sit in the back row where the lights are low. You know them Whisper style, sweet, yeah. nothing conversation flow. Takes them on a kiss is the order of the day. Sounds convincing. What did she say? She said, Baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. Oh, I she said, Baby, I could drive you crazy. If I seem so pushy, at the moment I'm feeling lucky. Mm -hmm. The vibes I'm feeling telling me you're appealing. Let's get together, destiny is forever. Me, Give us a chance and love will take over. Yeah. Give us a chance and love will take over. She said, baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. This morning, Ooh. baby, you look so charming. Right. I would like you to be my darling. Definitely. X amount of loving in the evening. Yeah. She said, baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. Oh, you look so She bad. said, baby, oh, I could drive you crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. I want both a date this evening. Mm. Maybe take you to a meal or a movie. You know. We could sit in the back row where the lights are low. Whisper sweet, nothing conversation flow. Nice. Next time on a kiss is the order of the day. Sounds convincing. What did she say? She said, baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. Oh, I she said, baby, oh, I could drive you crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Sorry if I seem so pushy. I didn't mean to be. At the moment, I'm feeling lucky. Here is the vibes I'm feeling telling me you're you appealing. Know. Let's get together, destiny is forever. Give us a chance and love will take over. Give us a chance, yeah. Give us a chance and love will take over. Give us a chance. She said, baby, she said, she said, I could be your lady. Oh, I At Dumpster Mill Theatre from the 6th through to the 9th of November, we have West Bromwich Operatics Youth Society. They have all shook up, and I have four of the cast with me now. Hello! Hiya! 
Then we'll do the next one they do the show, don't worry. Okay, so we'll work our way down the line and see who we've got. So introductions, please. My name's Jess, and I'm playing the role of Sylvia in Orsha Cup. My name's Jess, and I'm playing the role of Lorraine in Orsha Cup. My name's Tori, and I'm playing a bar flow. My name's Amber, and I'm the ward and I'm a dancer. So as long as they all say nice and loud, we'll be good, and yeah, that'll, that'll be great. Okay, so uh, let's t- talk a bit about the show, because it has got some amazing music on it from when your grandparents were kids. Maybe even older than that, to be fair. So t- tell us your favourite songs in the show. Mine would have to be That's Alright. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a lot of conflict in it, to be honest. It's yeah. very, you know, bickering um, between myself and my daughter in the show. Yeah. So, But it's, it's one of your songs, though, that's what yeah, counts. Yeah, yeah, it's quite funny as well, so. Yeah, and how, do, how else does your character sort of work with this? Is there, is there much, yeah, you've got the conflict, but it's... Is it a fun part to play as as well as the as the? Uh, yeah, or do you is. enjoy the conflict? <laughs> well, my character, she's quite an old, um, she's an older lady anyway, um, which owns the honky tonk. So she is quite mature about it. But there are a lot of funny lines in the show. Yeah. So that will be yeah. exciting. Yeah, you're yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, your favourite song and how it works with your character? I like "Come On Everybody" because there's a lot of dance and it's really fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, next down the line then, favourite song and, uh, and, and why? Uh, my favourite song is Heartbreak Hotel because I get to sit in a bar and act sad. Okay, <laughs> but, see, I know, it's, no, no one said all shook up yet, but we'll see how it goes. It could be popular there anyway. Okay, and finally? Um, mine's Jailhouse Rock. Okay, maybe no all shook up. Okay, <laughs> right. Because um, that's my like, number where I didn't get to do loads of dancing. And yeah, shaped on the dance floor, where it all works. Okay, and. Oh, all shook up though. It's uh, it's a musical which which is very much in a time as I've already alluded to. It's a long time before you guys. But it's a long time before I was even born. Mm. So uh, it's a uh, it's a show which has got a, a lot of memories for a lot of people. And uh, what sort of reaction have you had when you've you've looked at the music? Does it seem something which is you know is it a bit of a classic or, or is there some modern moments in there for you too? It's very classic. Yeah. Um, there are some things, some bits of music that are really upbeat, and then you've got the contrast to those. So, mm. but the story itself, though, do you think it tells something of, to, to the, yeah, the kids of today as well as what it would have been like at the time? Because it, it, it's very much yeah, parents uh, versus uh, the youngsters, isn't it? In some yeah. cases. Yeah. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on, and some messages behind the scenes. So, with the the rest of the cast, I mean, who else can we expect to see in the show? And um, there's. Three groups of dancers, there's the Hound Dogs, the Jailhouse Rockers, and the Roustabouts. And the Roustabouts are the worst trouble, aren't they, to be fair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and there's all of that coupled with some weddings at the end? Yeah. yeah. So there's um, lots of main parts who all couple up with each other at the end, and they all get married, so it's a nice, happy ending. We like a happy end of the show. It's a musical as well, so it's, it is good fun, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so the important thing is, how do we get tickets? So you can get them from the box office at... 07763746656 or you can go to www.ct.co.uk um, slash Wabossy um, dash All Shook Up. So W B O S Y Wabossy and All Shook <laughs> Dash All Shook Up. That's it. Posing with the leaflet. I like that. That works well for me. But uh, it's going to be a great time. Break a leg, perform the songs beautifully. Now, are we going to have a musical number? I think we should, shouldn't we? So we've got, you, you're two of the leads. So what are you going to perform for us? That's all right. Okay. So whose favourite was that one? Mine. So you yeah, get your own way, that's the way we like it. <laughs> but it is a West Bromwich Operatic Youth Society. It is the 6th through 9th of November, Dormston Mill School. Fantastic theatre, fantastic group. Uh, they're going to do a brilliant job of it. Get yourself along there and enjoy the show. This ain't all right with mama, this ain't all right, that's true. Girl, that boy will fool them with, he ain't no good for you. Ain't all right, it ain't all right. It ain't all right with mama, that's not the boy for you. I'm leaving town tomorrow, leaving town for sure. Then you won't be bothered with me hanging around no more. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right now, mama, any way you do. I've been so lonely, baby, I've been so lonely, I've been so lonely I could die. Although it's always crowded, you still can find some room for broken-hearted lovers to cry away their gloom. I've been
been so lonely, baby. I've been so lonely. I've been so lonely, I could die. Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can tell falling in love with you. Shall I stay? Would it be a sin if I can tell falling in love with you? More than half of Brits adapt classic foods by incorporating global influences, with more than two in five, 46%, enjoying mixing different cuisines from around the world for their Christmas feast. To tell us more, I'm joined now by star of the 2018 series of The Great British Bake Off, Kim Joy. Good afternoon to you. Hello, good afternoon. So tell me a, a bit more about this survey then, because uh, from what we've seen of, mm-hmm. of you doing things on, on The Great British Bake Off, you did like to mix things up a little bit, and also woodland creatures too. Yes, woodland creatures, and like I like to mix things up with different like cultural influences. So the research is, so I thought it was quite fitting to work with Amazon Fresh because they commissioned some research showing that just British people are more likely to experiment with food around the world mm-hmm. and put like some global influences into their food. A bit like me. So it turns out a lot of people like me. <laughs> so we're doing like um, a limited edition mince pie album with them for this Christmas. And that'll be sold through Amazon Fresh and Sea Lidgate exclusively. It's very exciting. So Christmas uh, is, is getting closer and closer. And as we think about the international influences on Christmas, something like mm-hmm. the turkey, that's not exactly a British native animal, is it? So if we are no. eating meat, turkeys <laughs> are not from round here. It's true. We think it's traditional, but actually, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's already a lot of things that aren't so traditional, and why not? Just take it a little bit further and put some mince pie in your bow buns. I, well, I, I think that should be quite good fun. And when it comes down to what you've been up to since Bake Off, have you continued to experiment with bakes and enjoy things like that to, to add international influences to your flavours? Yeah, definitely. I've been baking loads um, and, yeah, still doing the same same stuff that I did on the Bake Off. So incorporating, like, different flavours with my bake. So I, like, I love flavours like rose and pandan which not a lot of people have heard about as mm-hmm. well and just like combining that with more british things like a victoria sponge but why just make it vanilla and strawberry when you can put i don't know cardamom or pistachio in it i have a little bit of a, a different flavor edge to it as well yeah yeah definitely Amazon Fresh, obviously, this is a, another part of, of Amazon helping their customers get the best of things as well, isn't it? So how does it work with, in particular, these mince pies? So with the mince pies, you can buy them online. They're six ninety nine for like a pack of four. There's also a video on there. So we did a video of me creating them. So you can buy the plain ones or you could make them yourself, potentially, if you wanted to. Yep, get, um, get all the goodies and- from Amazon Fresh and you can create it in your own home. Yes. If you, well, yeah, you can buy it straight off yep. from Amazon Fresh, like a whole the whole product, or you can make it yourself in your own home. Mm-hmm. So you could do play ones, or I did like ones of penguins on them. You could try to do some penguin ones. See, well. that's not a shock, is it? The penguins is not a surprise. We expect <laughs> exactly that from you. Yeah, it's kind of expected. Mm-hmm. I mean, if there weren't penguins, that would be a bit weird. It'd be, it'd be wrong. Yeah, but particularly Christmas, you've got to have penguins. Again, yeah. imported international influence on our Christmas. So... Yeah, we penguins here, do we? No, but, we've got some in Dudley Zoo, but I think they borrowed them from somewhere. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but when, when it comes to your shopping, though, yeah, Amazon Grocery will have everything you need to make them yourself, Amazon Fresh to buy them, and mm-hmm. your video online. Where can we go to find out about all of this? So it's amazonfresh.co.uk. And then it'll have all the information there. And, yeah, the Mince Pie Bad will be available next week. So and have a look at the video on there next week as well. Check it all out. And, obviously, the the final of the Great British Bake Off this year is on the way. It'd be wrong of me not to ask if you have a favourite this year and whether they're <laughs> still in it. Ooh. I see. I, re- I find like they're like my children because <laughs> <laughs> I've been through the process now and now I'm watching it. I just find I just can't pick because it feels wrong. I feel like picking your children. <laughs> have you had a favourite bake so far in the series that you would, like, you would have liked to have come up with yourself then? Oh, yes. I really, well, there's so many, so it's hard to pick a favourite favourite, but I really liked, um, 
I love in the first week when Henry did the little, um, he did a royal icing piped house and the one that he dropped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, I was like, oh. Yes, that was quite exciting. Yeah, and then I liked Rosie's um, chicken. There has been some amazing stuff on there, hasn't there, this year? Yeah. Are, are you keeping in touch with the rest of your gang? Because I, I know that everyone from last year seems to be talking to this year's people. Yeah, yeah, I'm chatting to my gang as well as the new gang as well. So we we're going to do like um, a Halloween party with Helena. Okay, <laughs> well, well, we can look out for that online and see what happens with there. Yeah. However, Amazon Fresh is a place to go for, for your mince pies that you have created for them. Uh, once again, give us that website so we can find out all the details and yeah. watch the video. Uh, amazonfresh.co.uk and you can find the limited edition it's by albums on there as of next week and yeah it's just exclusively sold through Amazon Fresh so, and um, Steelers Gate who produce the mince pie by albums so, yeah. Yeah, so a bun that's a mince pie and a mince pie that's a bun I like the idea you can't go wrong with that can you no yeah, <laughs> Kim Joy, lovely to speak to you. Thank you for joining us. Have a fantastic Christmas. I was already thinking about that, and hopefully you'll have a brilliant oh. Halloween with a gang too. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice Christmas. This is a remix. <laughs> Come on, everybody, dances on your kiss again, man. I like a remix. You know how we go. Hard sexy ladies. Come on. Pretty girl, wiggle and wind your body. Rah! Wiggle and wind. The music sweet like the food that you eat. The music sweet like the food that you eat. You look good, feel good. This is get a mind. Show off your body, girl. You know you look fine. Sweet soul music cleansing your soul. Your body is your temple. You never go home. Girl, wiggle and wind your body. Wiggle and wind, girl. You look sexy. Special request to all the girls. Drop it low one time one. Wine up your body, girl Wine, wine, wine up Wine up your body, girl Again, again, again Wine up your body, girl Wine, wine, wine Wine up your body Drop it low one time Wine up your body, girl Wine, wine, wine Come on, sexy ladies The music sweet like the food that you eat. The music sweet like the food that you eat. You look good, feel good, it's a state of mind. Show off your body, girl, you know you look fine. Sweet soul music cleansing your soul. Your body is your temple, you never go home. Trey, Trey Cabaret has two homes now, one in Stafford and a brand new one in Litchfield that are at St Mary's Hub on the 2nd of November. To tell me more, Richard Pointed, hello. Hello, good to see you. Well, good to see you too, and uh, we, we're almost resplendent, I think, here, well, aren't we? I think that's a technical term for I it. I thought I'd make a bit of an effort, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know what Trey Trey Cabaret is, explain a little, not too much, though. Okay, so Trey <laughs> PG Trey, audience. PG audience. <laughs> well, it, yeah, so Trey Trey Cabaret is, is uh, a kind of variety show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, got everything from... Circus skills, uh, there are comedians, there are uh, musicians, 
but there's also burlesque dancers. So I think that's the thing you might be hinting at with your PG audience. Yeah, it, it has everything though, doesn't yeah, it? Really, absolutely. It's, it's kind of harking back to the old school days of kind of um, old school variety and music mm-hmm. hall. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of like there's been a resurgence of it really with programs like Britain's Got Talent, I mm-hmm. suppose, and there's a, it, it's revived an interest in that kind of entertainment. Well, with your you know, first home in Stafford at the Gatehouse, you've done some great work down there. That's ongoing, uh, but Litchfield is crying out for a bit of fun too. Absolutely, yeah. We've been in Stafford for, this is our sixth year in Stafford actually, um, so we thought we'd bring the show to Litchfield as well, so we're still doing both of those. Uh, we had a show in Stafford this Saturday just gone, and then the Litchfield one launches on this Saturday, November 2nd. And when you're putting these acts together, obviously it'll be a different show to what people saw last week. There's going Absolutely. to be you know, a, a, a different take on it. But that's the joy of it, isn't it? You, you may be there doing what you do, but uh, you've got a different team who join you each time, some regulars, and uh, it just makes for a, a big experience. Yeah, very much so. I, as a host, I go by the name Stage Door Johnny, mm-hmm. and um, I really see it as making it about those people at this time in that space for one evening because you're never going to get that same combination of people again. Mm-hmm. So you've got um, different performers. You've got a different lineup for every single show and you've got different audience members. So it's, it's, I, I thrive on that liveness of it, really. This does mean that there may be a little bit of interaction with the audience as well, though. Oh, yes. And do they thrive on that? Yeah, very much so, very <laughs> much so. Um, but I kind of, I ease it in gently at the very start of the show. Then I mention about how, like, the show will run and how it's unlike any theatrical experience that I've had before because... Um, particularly if there are performers who might be removing articles of clothing, it's really awkward to do that in a room full of silent people. <laughs> uh, so we need them to be kind of whooping and cheering and, and egging them on as much as possible. And the more they give, the more we give back as well. Yeah, so uh, an amazing show, uh, a show for, for grown-ups. For grown-ups, uh, yes. <laughs> but, uh, but one which is uh, a good laugh. And if you don't wish to be as much a part of it, then you know, you're know you still going to make the noises, but you, you may not uh, sit quite so close to the front. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, nobody's going to get up and like, be made an embarrassment of it. It's all very consensual. Except you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's part of the course. Um, but yeah, it's all very consensual. Um, nobody's going to be made to feel awkward about it. Yeah. And obviously, if you're kind of that way inclined, you might want to sit a bit further towards the back. But as, as a host and all the performers, you can kind of sense when someone's up for it and those people who are You're a professional. You know what people <laughs> People want. That's what people say. <laughs> don't, don't believe everything you read. So, I mean, when, when, when you're picking acts for this, I mean, this must be an amazing little black book that you've got. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I've been a host now for nearly 10 years, actually. Mm-hmm. So, so, I get to host other shows across the country. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I handpick the best performers and, and bring them to my audiences as well. Um, I generally try and provide a, a broad spectrum uh, that represents the cabaret community. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we'll have circus performers. So, at Saturday show in Litchfield, We've got a hand balancer, uh, we've got a juggler, um, we've got um, two burlesque performers. One of them is more kind of towards the comedic end and one mm. of them is more kind of classic burlesque. Yeah. And then I kind of hold the whole evening together mm-hmm. with a bit of comedy and music and my own take on some songs. And, and a bit of burlesque as well, have you ever attempted? Oh, no. No, okay. <laughs> maybe not on this occasion. Yeah. I think we should set him up for that one at some point, that would be good. No, nobody uh, wants to see that. Okay. <laughs> but you've got Facebook page and tickets that can be bought online, so where do people go to find out more? Yeah, so if you want to learn more about Trade Trade Cabaret, you can find us at Trade Trey Cabaret on Facebook, that's T-R-E-S T-R-E-S Cabaret, uh, we're on Instagram if you want to see backstage shots and things like that we're also on Twitter, um, but if you want to buy tickets for the show, you can get them from the hub St Mary's .co.uk so that's S-T-M-A-R-Y-S .co.uk So hub check St. all of that out, look for that, yeah. stick it in your search engine but get along to the Facebook page, there's links for everything there yeah. and you'll be able to say future dates, if you can't get to this one this weekend, yeah. there's going to be loads of other stuff happening, and say, literally across the country. Absolutely, yeah, so we've got a couple of Christmas shows coming up as well, in Litchfield it's the 21st of December, so if you've got any kind of um, work outings that you want to get on then it's an ideal different night out for something that you would have done previously uh, and in Stafford it's on the 27th of December so it kind of bridges the gap between Christmas and New Year when there's that kind of dead space that nobody knows what to do with yeah. so, you've, got, uh, you've got a bit of time you don't know what's oh, going on absolutely go along for it at Trey Trey Cabaret treat yourself to a night out good old knees up sounds like an absolute treat give us those details again for the Facebook page and the website for tickets fantastic yeah so on um, Facebook Instagram and on Twitter it's just at Trey Trey Cabaret T-R-E-S-T-R-E-S-C-A-B-A-R-E-T and then for tickets it's uh, www.thehubstmarys.co.uk check it all out S-T-M-A-R-Y-S okay 
Richard, thank you for joining us. Absolutely and uh, th- th- thank you for uh, you know, the, 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 the shoes are amazing as well. I don't even know if they're in shot. Look at them, it, it, look it, at them shine. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all just part of the magic of Trichai Cabaret. <laughs> See this man and a cast of literally tens of people doing weird things and fun things and magical things on stage. But uh, have a great time, break a leg, and uh, yeah, do a good job of it, as I know you will. Certainly, absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, turn me up, turn me up. Give me some more music. Oh, yes. Dan just deep on the mic, MC. This is something I'm telling everybody. How with me and you can't hungry? Mm. Original Dan just dear cars. Mm-hmm. When the problem tell him. Long time, girl, me never see you. Come make me hold your hand. Long time, girl, me never see you. Tell me where you've been so long. It's been a long time since we had a kiss. kiss. Let's take our walk, y'all. Reminisce. Mm-hmm. Chat about the things that I'm going to miss. Chat me not tell a lie. The Prince of Wales plays host to Brown Hills Musical Theatre from the 6th through to the 9th of November. I'm joined now by Brett and Helen to tell me more about what's going on. Hello to you both. Hello. Hi. So, uh, Brett, you're directing. I am. So I'm going to talk to someone really important first. Yeah. Helen, tell me what's going on. <laughs> well, Brown Hills Musical Theatre Company, we are renowned for putting on not just a normal concert, but absolute show-stopping concerts. Mm-hmm. And this concert is not going to disappoint. It's a non-stop musical extravaganza all around the world and we have this amazing theme where we're going to lots of different countries and we're performing full show-stopping numbers so it's not just one of those stand and sing concerts it's a full production we're talking sets and we're talking stuff. Yeah. sets yeah. dancing the work so if you want bread. and it, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so if you want to see almost like you know it's like what 10 10 musicals in one night it's the place to be. And this all comes hot off the heels of your last performances as well. Yeah, I mean, we finished uh, Sound of Music back in May and uh, we, we took a couple of weeks and then we, we started again. And, and these production concerts are very, very difficult to put together because they come at a tough time of the year with everybody's holidays and whatnot. So that makes it more difficult and more of a challenge. But the, as, as Helen touched upon, these, these aren't just a normal stand and sing concert. These are so full of energy and and they come with the sets the costumes and you know we try to give some sort of i suppose a narrative to the show so that people can uh, sort of follow some kind of story or at least the theme as we said you know we're going you, you pick up on where you are yes. in that particular musical so you yeah. know what's going on yeah. so who chooses the songs 
Um, ah. uh, <laughs> between myself, our MD, Ian uh, Room, and Michelle Windsor, who's our uh, choreographer, mm-hmm. um, the three of us got together and we, we drafted up about 50 different <laughs> versions of the show. <laughs> um, and, you know, we've had a few complications and that's led to a specific draft that we've chosen and, and the, the music in it is fantastic and I think it's got it's one of those shows that really has something for everybody and it's sometimes yeah, these things happen because it's meant to be isn't it and you see the show come together you thought, well I wouldn't have thought to do that but this is amazing yeah I mean like I say um, due to some te- you know it's, it's more so you know we had a few issues so we had to change one of the shows for example mm. and that was only changed what um, yeah it was relatively about close by but seven weeks ago eight yeah. weeks ago but but r- rights can always be an issue once you've got yeah, that sort of thing ironed out exactly. away you go with a fantastic and, show and the choreography Michelle's so talented she's made the choreography that we already learned and she's fit it to the new show and it's, mm-hmm. it's brilliant it's just it was just like clockwork really and it's it's Looks fantastic. Okay, so show highlights for both of you. First of all, hello. Um, I I really really love the section that we're doing from South Pacific. Mm-hmm. It's a you know it is a real classics um, show, but where from from Brown Hill's perspective, we are so fortunate to have such a huge cast of talented mm-hmm. members, and it's just one of those sections that brings lots of comedy to mm-hmm. it. With and it really shows off, for example, yeah. the strength of the male um, chorus and also the female ensemble too, so I absolutely love that section. Yeah. And when you've got so many people, you can do this and get away with it, can't you? Because yeah. the ones who've just been on stage, plenty of time to get ready for the next yeah. number, and you can use it at a massive feel like this. that, does it? No, that's so cool. <laughs> but um, we are, and we're, we're really fortunate, as I said, that we have got such a vast array of members, you mm-hmm. know, all ages, all backgrounds, but this sort of concert really shows how everybody pulls together, mm-hmm. and it gives everybody that opportunity to shine as well, which is, it doesn't always happen the same in a, you know, in a standard production. So this really is is something that involves the whole of the company's um, yeah. energy. Um, other highlights, we're doing a section from um, Scarlet Pimpernel, which... Um, okay. And that doesn't get seen that often, does no, it? it? No, it doesn't. And, you know, it, it's a really, you know, dark musical, but it's absolutely beautiful, and the music is, is stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and, it, and you think from one, section, one second we're in South Pacific and it's all, you know, fun and, you know... Lots of jollity, sort of exactly, stuff, yeah. and then we yeah, then yeah. we're able to switch to something, <clears throat> su- you know, f- such as Scarlet Pimpernel, which is really dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, we, we do that all the way through the show, which shows kind of the talent from the production team on how they've managed to make everything fit together mm-hmm. so smoothly. And your favourite bit then, and the reasons why? I like, I mean, I like it all, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to be biased, aren't I? No, I uh, there's uh, we're doing um, a section from Young Frankenstein, which um, is one of our quirkier choices. Um, but we're doing a, a barbershop quintet, okay. so a uh, complete a cappella, and we're working really hard. And and then the, we've got the company numbers throughout the show as well, which are just they're so high energy, and you just love them. You you just you can't help but enjoy yourself when you're doing it yourself. So. Hopefully that translates and the audience uh, feel that when they come to see it. Well, it is a whole world of musicals. It is Brown Hills Musical Theatre. It is the Prince of Wales and it's the 6th through to the 9th of November. So we need details we on do. how we get hold of tickets. Well, we are. Um, we, we have six performances. Yep. So none of that excuse about bonfire night. Okay. There are more nights if, you, yep. if you've got plans. <laughs> um, so the opening night is the Wednesday, the 6th of November. Um, 7.30 performance. Um, tickets are from £15. And right the way through to the Saturday, the 9th of November, there is also a matinee at 2.30 mm-hmm. on the Saturday. Um, you can get tickets either direct from the box office at the Prince of Wales, or you can go to Posi Tickets, which mm-hmm. everybody knows, but www.positickets.co.uk, or you can call our ticket secretary on um, 01785 715 368. So, so. All of those details, yep. those numbers... Worst comes to the worst, go to the, the Prince of Wales website, you can grab the, the details from, from there on the link Absolutely. probably as well. So it's, it's all simple. But look for these guys on Facebook as well because you'll find yes. out what they're doing next. Facebook details? Yes. Um, Brown Hills Musical Theatre Company. Lots of long words, but it all fits because that's yep. who we are. Yep. So lots narrows of it down nicely, doesn't <laughs> it? Yes, yeah. exactly. It There's can only, only be one you. of yeah, us. That's the way. <laughs> but I mean, break it out, have a great time around the world with some fantastic music. Absolutely. And the outfits to match as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Some secrets. There are some very raunchy outfits in certain sections as there well. Are. 
that's just me. Yeah, you look worried already. <laughs> They're going to be brilliant. They are Brad Hill's Musical Theatre. Come along and see them down at the Prince of Wales. Hey, my man, you in a wolf, you know. Don't just, just get started, you know that. Got no fear of the tank, you know. Watch, you know. Yeah, man, if you can't read it. May I tell you, listen to me. Over till the Dan Crown King, it ain't over till the building ding. Dan chest deep on the mic still a sing. The fans them tell me just go on with me ting. It ain't over till the Dan Crown King, it ain't over till the building ding. Dan chest deep on the mic still a sing. The fans them tell me just go on with me ting. When I was a young man, big and strong, me get a record deal from City London. Sign the contract, get me two grand for make two single on one album. Drop it like it's hot The really man fire All the chinks them a clap It's all in the plate Everything will be great Me wait and me wait Till me nearly lose me faith It ain't over till the Dan Crown King It ain't over till the building ding Dan chest deep on the mic still a sing The fans them tell me just go on with me ting It ain't over till the Dan Crown King It ain't over till the building ding Dan chest deep on the mic still a sing The fans them tell me just go on with me ting Listen to me story Listen properly this is the thing that happened to me All these years I may never shed a tears True to myself and listen to me peers Some say me whole, me look like rich hole Some say me lost it, pops your pass it Wrong the mic, get on your bike Zim zim up on your frame, it's too whole for this game It ain't over till the Dan Crown King It ain't over till the building ding Dan chest deep on the mic still a sing Me fans them tell me just go on with me ting It ain't over till the Dan Crown King It ain't over till the building me fans them tell me just go on with me thing Them tell me say no worry things cook and curry Me never know all along It was a big con young people nowadays Be careful where you sign Read the small print and show them you're not blind Take your contract but me not signed up Take your contract but me no idiot Me not signed up, me not signed up Take your contract but me not signed up It ain't over <laughs> Till it on Crown King It ain't over mm-hmm. Till it on Crown King mm-hmm. It ain't over till it on Crown King It ain't over till the building ding Dunches deep on the mic still a sing Me fans them tell me just go on with me ting It ain't over till it on Crown King It ain't over till the building ding Dunches deep on the mic still a sing Me fans them tell me just go on with me ting October has been Domestic Abuse Awareness Month. The Haven obviously doing their bit to raise awareness and help those unfortunate victims of this. Uh, I'm joined now by Hayley and by Lucy, who are going to tell us more about what's going on, what has been going on, and some exciting news with a pop-up shop. First of all, (laughs) Hayley, let's talk a bit about what you've been doing this month. Yeah, so we've been really busy this month. Um, It's a big month, obviously, for us in the calendar. Um, There's so many people that are impacted by domestic abuse but don't realise that they're victim to that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're reaching out to all those people people that might need our support to raise awareness of the signs and the symptoms and um, we've done it through a multitude of different ways this month a little bit different to last year and mm-hmm. um, so we've had two key events in October uh, we had our walk in the park yep. event which we talked to you a little bit about last and you time had we met that, and that raised a massive amount of money which Indeed, is brilliant incredible yeah so it was over two thousand pounds that we raised Mm -hmm. but more importantly we we raised awareness around domestic abuse and the fact that the haven is here to support and reaching a really wide audience of people Um, I suppose more sort of relative to Domestic Abuse Awareness Month, we had a theatre production, Mm -hmm. something a little bit different with Journeyman Theatre Productions. Um, It was a play, a really short play, um, about coercive control. So not all signs of abuse are visible. Mm -hmm. So very much people associate that with bruises um, and visible signs, but quite often the most worrying signs are the ones that you can't see. Oh, well, particularly in the days of technology now, it could be abusive uh-huh. emails, text messages, telling yeah. someone what to do remotely, control yeah. over their social media, yeah. not letting them express themselves. Yeah. And you know, there can be a lot of things which, which come out of that. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be within a relationship either. It could just be you know, a, a friendly arrangement that uh, but it turns to abuse through this sort of stuff as well. Yeah. And it, it, it's 
sometimes it's too yeah you know, the wrong kind of attention but it, it you know it can go horribly horribly wrong and it is important that this sort of thing is flagged up quickly isn't it yeah definitely i mean we see abuse not just in partners like relationships but we also see abuse in families mm-hmm. um so that's quite prominent where unfortunately potentially we've had scenarios in the past where a grandson has abused his mother grandmother yeah. and like taken money and things so it can come in all different forms um, and really we're just raising awareness for women to spot those signs and speak to us yeah. um, and get the support that they need and to know that it's not okay it's not okay to receive 100 text messages a day it's not okay for him to want to know your whereabouts every second of the day mm-hmm. um, and like you mentioned like stalking and harassment that is like so prominent at the moment throughout the month and as well things like um, people check receipts and things so if you've got a friend who's always holding on to receipts it might not just them being careful with their money it might be them having to explain where the money is spending that sort of thing yeah, we've so. shared a lot of articles this month haven't we so the press um, have been reporting a lot more on domestic abuse which mm-hmm. is great um, more still needs to be done as we would always yeah. say but there's been a lot of things around technology mm-hmm. so we shared a story around a lady who her partner seemed to know exactly where she was all the time he was repeating lines from conversations she'd had with her friends he wasn't even there yeah. um, and she was completely paranoid she didn't know how this was happening and the article that we shared explains that he was tracking her phone and monitoring everything all her conversations so abuse can come in so many different forms especially with technology nowadays it yeah. makes it so much and more easier and with that case it isolated her from her friends because the only person who could have known that those phrases were being said was the friend so yeah. that meant she didn't trust going out with that friend anymore well we, we, we've seen this sort of thing nationally as well yeah. haven't we the, the, the whole situation with two footballers wives I mean that yeah. was so yeah that we've, we've yet to see the end of that story <laughs> yeah. but it, it, it anything like that that puts you under pressure um, it doesn't have to be on a national scale just within a group of friends it is the same feeling yeah. as we've seen reported nationally yeah definitely so we wanted to do as much as we could to reach out to raise more awareness around not just the bruises but the other things that aren't so talked about mm-hmm. so that's what our aim has been for the domestic abuse awareness month it, we feel it's been really successful we've had great response and we just hope that by sharing these articles and by running these events that if we reach just one woman that recognises that what she's going through isn't okay and reaches out for our support, then it's made a difference. Right and so there's an awareness month, but this goes on 24-7, 365, yeah. Yeah. and it needs to be stopped. It, it cannot happen. And again, you, we're seeing stuff in the press, but that's really still only the tip of the iceberg. There are people who are out there who feel that, yeah, that they should be able to live their lives but can't. And, and equally, it could be, in some cases what can be classed as abusive behaviour is someone being overprotective and they need to think about what they're doing to make sure it doesn't turn into an abusive yeah. situation so yeah. it's both sides the awareness can work to stop somebody doing it if they've just realised that actually they're going a bit too far yeah. when they're not intending to and it's the way somebody feels about what's been done to them could be very different to the intention sometimes yeah. so it's not always someone being yeah. <laughs> abusive intentionally but Everyone should take a step back, think about what they're doing and how, how it, their actions, and particularly through technology, can, uh, can impact others. And to make sure that you talk about it, and then if you need to you know, call for help, the Haven are here for you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I couldn't agree more with that statement. Um, it is about getting that right balance. Mm-hmm. But if you are not sure, a lot of women aren't, mm-hmm. and will say, really, I don't know, he just loves me, he's just been really supportive, or he's really looking out for me. Just speak to a friend, yeah. a family, or give us a call. Yeah, it's, you've it's, got a hotline that helps with that sort of stuff. Yeah. You, you can be approached. We're not here to judge you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hopefully your situation isn't that of, of abuse. Yeah. But if it is, we, you know, we can give you some advice yeah. and a bit of support and know that you're not on your own. So mm-hmm. what I would say is, even if you're not sure, don't be afraid. Reach out to somebody, and even if, if it's not to us, a friend or a relative. Uh, if you're worried about your daughter or your mum or like your sister or anyone like that, or a friend or a colleague, then we can also advise family members and friends Mm-hmm. We're not just for the woman who's abused. We're for the wider network because yeah, it so, can be so they hard. know what to say. Yeah, it can be hard because if someone, if an abuser is pulling your loved one away from you and isolating you, it can be so hard to know what to say, what to do, and sometimes it's just best. It's nice to talk to someone like us that at the Haven who know exactly what you're feeling and how to help you mm-hmm. maintain the best relationship and yeah. support the person you love. But neutral but with an understanding of what can happen. Yeah, yeah. And 
it's again, it's it's down to yeah, an understanding of everybody's situation. Every every situation is different, but you've got experience pretty much across the board. The amount <laughs> yeah. of time that Haven has been here, yeah. there are counsellors, there are parts of the team who can actually help. Yeah. We've just celebrated our forty sixth birthday yeah. in October. So you might have seen that on our Facebook. So we have been here for such a long time, and we've developed and we've evolved to cater for women's needs and be there for them mm-hmm. as best as we can. So yeah. uh, if only forty seven years on, there wasn't the need for you, yeah. but there still is. <laughs> it's ongoing, and, and that needs funding. And this is where something like the pop up shop comes in yeah um definitely we're having a one-off on wednesday the 6th of november so um we're gonna have lots of labeled items brand new um i know we've got things from boohoo asos things like that there are other companies available but potentially not at our shop (laughs) (laughs) it's this shop that we're interested in (laughs) so but it's open 10 till 4 we're just opposite iceland so um if you just walk past we'll have like the signs and the banners up um, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Not just the clothes, <laughs> the actual shop's gone. So, like, yeah. please get there, grab as much things as you can. This could be a good chance to do some Christmas shopping at bargain prices, well, couldn't I, it? I can confirm we have got some Christmas jumpers. Okay, <laughs> right. and, that's all good. And we're selling our Christmas cards, which have been designed by one of the children in refuge as well. So, mm-hmm. we've got everything you could want leaflets, posters, anything like that. And it'll just be, it's hoping to do a lot of fun of raising awareness, but mm-hmm. also, obviously, um, we do need to fund, like, you. We found out the other week um, that 80% of funding across the country has gone from refugees in, mm. since 2010, and we can only really fundraise and support refugees. They're only there because people of Wolverhampton are supporting yeah, us. This so. is, if they're the people of the city, this wouldn't happen, yeah. and it's making sure that we're looking after the vulnerable members of our own community, so yeah. it's, uh, it's a great way of, of getting involved. The pop-up shop's one of them. Yeah. Give us the details of where and when. It's <laughs> Wednesday the 6th yeah. of November, uh, 10 till 4, opposite Iceland in the Wolfram Centre, and, you know, bring a tenner, and you can get look, look flash and feel good about yourself. At okay, yeah, so... <laughs> Or, or more, you can spend more, we'll let oh, you. Oh yeah, more's great, yeah. great. <laughs> so, no, uh, so There is going to be something there for absolutely everybody as well. Yeah. Whatever budget you've got, come along and, and yeah. take a little look at it. Yeah. But you've got some other great stuff as well, things like quizzes on the way? Yeah, we've got uh, our quiz in the 27th of November, so that's part of our 16 Days of Activism or Orange Walls campaign. Mm-hmm. So that's raising awareness again of the impacts of domestic abuse, but our quiz, it's a festive one, it's fun, it's at the Perton Golf Club, a five or a person. If you don't win the quiz, then... You come in like runner up level, you get a spoon from one of the kids decorated. So, <laughs> okay, like... <laughs> so there's treats for absolutely everyone. Anything else we need to know about, like the website and that sort of stuff? Yeah, um, if you check out our website, we've always got tons of fun events. All the information's on www.havenrefuge.org.uk slash events mm-hmm. and our Facebook handles at the Haven WTON. But we've got some networking coming up, raising awareness of the fact that every month um, three women will miss work three days a week are missed by women because they are being abused uh-huh. things like that festive women's networking like everything and Christmas cards yeah. <laughs> so all the positive stuff yeah, yeah. making you aware of the negatives as well just so yeah. you can be there help out yeah. and make sure that uh, you know it, it's all there but you're looking for the fun stuff aren't you yeah and, I'm, I'm and, pushing the fun stuff yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that, that's the ethos of the whole thing isn't it we, yeah. everyone can have fun to make sure something good comes off yeah. the back of all of this that's what counts yeah, definitely. web address once more time please www.havenrefuge.org.uk slash events Hey, yeah. <laughs> Lucy thanks for having a chat with us Thank have a great time with everything you're doing in the run-up to Christmas yeah. and we will be talking Christmas soon as well yeah, won't we? But not too early so no. you know we're aware it's still the end of October so. Yeah. Okay. That's all good. <laughs> but thank you again and look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. That's all for this week thank you so much for joining us back with episode 541 next week I hope to catch you then so for now. Goodbye from the milk bar Goodbye from the milk bar Goodbye from the milk bar Goodbye from the milk bar, yeah. Goodbye from the milk bar, yeah.